Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today I'm going to show you how to replace a sky. We're going to take this plain blue sky and we're going to replace it with this dynamic sky. Hey, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com, the very best place to learn Photoshop and Lightroom. And today I'm going to show you how to replace a sky inside of Photoshop. So here we have a photograph that I shot just outside of Austin, Texas. And I love this building. I got there at the right time of the day and everything. But the only problem is the sky is completely blue, which makes it kind of look cartoony. It's kind of cool. Uh, but at the same time, it's kind of a little bit boring. So what I want to do is replace with a more interesting sky. So what I did is I went onto Adobe Stock and I searched dramatic skies. And I got all of these really cool looking skies here. And I decided that I wanted to use this one, this whirlwind kind of a sky. But I just want to quickly mention to you that Adobe Stock is a great place to search for things like skies and textures and other things other than just photographs. There's a lot of useful things that you can use to enhance your existing photos. And I'm also going to give you a link underneath for 10 free images so you can get started. All right, so what we're going to do is replace the sky. So we're going to take this sky here and we're just going to drag it out of my library and drop it on top of the photograph. So I kind of like this because it has a very kind of superhero kind of a feel to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag it all the way up to about here. So it covers up the whole photograph area. And I'm just going to hit enter to apply it. And what we want to do now is I want to take this building here and I'm going to drop it above the clouds. So let's take our image here and we're going to drop it above. I'm also going to make a copy of this. So command J. And I'm just going to hide that copy. We'll come back to this copy later. So what we want to do now is we want to cut this out and allow the sky to come through. Now, there's a number of ways we could do it. We could do color range. We could do select a mask. There's a lot of different ways of cutting it out. And in fact, color range actually works quite well. But in this situation, I want to quickly do this just using blend if. And so what we're going to do is go down to the FX and we're going to apply the blending options. So it's the very top one. And here it is. Now what this does is enables us to go under this blend if area and we can cut out different parts of the photograph based on its tonal qualities. So this is a way of masking things out without actually having to go out and do all the masking work. Now because the sky is blue, we're going to jump into the blue channel. So we're going to go under blue and you'll see blue here. Now if I push this side up, you'll notice what happens immediately it starts to get rid of all that blue sky. Now you'll see some of these areas are a little bit rough and jaggy. If I hold down the Alt or the Option key and split the triangle, I can smoothen those transitions over a little bit. So why don't we just take the left one over. All right, it's looking pretty good. And let's play around with the other one, get a good balance. All right, it's looking pretty good down here. We'll come to that in a second, but overall, our cutout's looking pretty good, pretty clean. So I'm going to click OK to apply it. Now this is why I added a second layer, because I can take this layer on top now and I can use this as a masking layer to paint back in those areas where we got a little overzealous. So if I hold down the Alt or the Option key and go down to the mask, I can create an inverted mask. Hold down Alt, Option, so Alt on Windows, Option, Mac, click, and now we have a mask and what it does is it completely hides this layer. Now what I love about an inverted mask is that we have a complete image on top that's just hidden. So any area we want to paint back, all we need to do is grab white and then we can paint back in that white on that mask and that's going to bring back the detail wherever we want on the image. So let's do that right now. Let's grab white as our foreground color. And I'm going to grab a brush here and I'm going to hit the left bracket key to make it a little bit smaller. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint in around this area. Don't worry if you go over the lines, it doesn't matter. And particularly I want to just get up here and just get it pretty nice up there. Just want to make sure we're just filling in all those little bits. Okay, so obviously we went over the line in a couple of places and it's easy to fix. We're just going to hit the X key to inverse it and now paint back with black. 
Now, the reason I do it this way is because this is already masked, so I don't have to be quite so precise. And it enables me to just make sure I get all those pieces that I want to get. Now, I'm just going over that wrought iron. Don't worry about some of that for now. We'll come back to some of this. Do some touch-ups. And we're just kind of going down on these edges. And we're just using that mask to select everything. All right, we're most of the way there now. We've got a little bit of blue fringing and a little bit of blue over the edges there. How do we deal with that? Okay, there's a number of ways we could do it. We could sit there and meticulously mask that out, um, which would work, but really here's a quicker way of doing it. Let's just get rid of the color. So what we're gonna do is just create a new layer. And then I'm gonna mask down here, I'm gonna mask the gray. I'm gonna hold the Alt or the Option key and I'm gonna grab the gray. Now notice if I paint, it's gonna get rid of this. We don't necessarily wanna get rid of all this. We just want the color. So what we're gonna do is change the blend mode from normal to color. And now when we're in color, look what happens. All we're doing now is we're just getting rid of that color. As simple as that. And I'm just gonna paint all of that right there. And I'm gonna let that kind of silhouette out there in the distance. All right, same up up here. See where we've got this blue in here? I'm gonna drop this down and I'm just gonna paint in. See there? Just get rid of that blue right now. And you can see that that's looking great. Same with these fringes, let's just paint them out. We could actually even pick up the green if we wanted. Just paint in that green there. And see how we can fix that. And we could even take the green over here if we wanted to apply it to these trees. In fact, why don't we mask this out and clean this up a little bit? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna actually just redo that section because I'm not happy with it. Let's just make a selection around here. And what I'm gonna do is just hit the delete key. And now we're gonna paint this back in again. Let's grab the brush, I'm gonna grab that gray, and then we're gonna go in this blue area, which is actually a wall. Now we just make it gray, it's not gonna stick out so much. And we can go gray in those edges there. And we could just go around this and it's probably gonna look a lot better. There we go. Now I could do the um, a composite layer of this and then just select to mask this out again. But you know what, just doing this, painting in with this color mode, look at this, how we can just quickly retouch this, just save a lot of time because in the real world, it's about getting things done quickly. I mean, we could just use actually content aware, just completely get rid of that. Um, and just allow the sky to come through. There's a lot of different things we could do there, but I just want you to be aware of these different techniques. All right, so we're looking pretty good. So what I wanna do now is I wanna just kind of bring all of this together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select all of these layers, hit Command, Option, Shift, and E. And what it does is it creates a composite layer of all the layers in one. And now we're gonna go here, we're gonna go into Camera Raw and make a little adjustment, Camera Raw Filter. Now the reason I wanna do all of this together rather than the background and the foreground separate is now that we've got them together, all the adjustments are gonna to apply to everything which is gonna tie it together a little bit tighter so it's not gonna look so much like a composite. Even though it's kind of a fantasy image, so obviously it is a composite. <laughs> um, so let's kind of do that. We could play around with the color temperature, we could cool that down a little if we wanted or we could even warm it up. I kind of like warming that up. So even though we've got this kind of really cool, like even though it's backlit here, why is the front lit? Because it looks good. <laughs> I mean, we could have lighting here. There could be a big white building in front of it that's reflecting the light. There's a lot of reasons why this could be lit. Um, so don't always think just because the light's behind it that that's wrong. Um, okay, so let's just recover some highlights. And I'm gonna open up some, actually I'm not gonna open up the shadows a lot, maybe just a little bit. Give it some black, some white, little punch, little touch of clarity, not too much. Maybe add a little haze, pushing it a little to the left there. And let's play around with this color temperature a little bit more. I'm really kind of liking it where it is there. I think that looks kind of nice. And maybe pull the saturation down a little bit. There we go. Give it a bit more contrast. And there we go, we're getting a kind of an interesting looking image there. And let's just click OK to apply it. Now one of the things we could do to just finish this off is we could apply a coloring effect. Let's go into here and we're gonna grab a curves adjustment. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull it down just a little bit there in the shadows, make it a little bit more ominous. And then we can also jump into the blues here. And I'm going to increase the blues a little bit in the shadows. And I'm going to decrease them just a little bit in the highlights, just to give it a little bit more of a mood. So if we look at what that curves did, just made it a little bit more ominous. So anyway, as you can see here, it's very easy to replace the sky and really change the story of the image by just putting a more dramatic sky in. Don't forget you can grab those skies, you can shoot your own skies. Um, in fact, when I'm traveling around, I take my mobile phone, my camera, whenever I see skies, I shoot them all the time. Clouds, sunsets, sunrises, and I actually create a folder inside of Lightroom. Now, if you don't have exactly the right one, you can always jump on Adobe Stock and you can use it there. So anyway, I'm going to give you a link underneath where you can grab 10 free images from Adobe Stock. And if you're a photographer, you can sell your photographs on Adobe Stock, make a little extra money, and get your photo in front of millions of people. Um, and all you need to do is sign up to be a contributor. The link is underneath. Click on there. It's very easy to do it. So anyway, I have a question for you guys. What is your favorite time of the day to shoot? Do you like to shoot during sunrise, sunset, and also weather? Do you like a sunny day? Do you like a wet day? Do you like it summer, winter? When is the best time that you like to go out and shoot to get your favorite images? Let me know in the comments underneath. Anyway, if you like this tutorial, smash that like button into dust. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button right now and you'll get a new tutorial from me at least once a week. Become part of the cafe crew and you also have to hit that little bell notification so you'll know whenever I upload a new tutorial. So anyway guys, thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.